welcome back once again to the channel and today we're going to be having the tutorial about how to use Nearpod in your classrooms remotely and also in person okay so we're going to begin by being here um, open up in Google and we want to type in here in the top Nearpod.com okay once you log in once you're here it'll take you to this page if you ever have a, an account yet um, sign up here as a teacher um, for free it's all for free okay but and once you have that then you'll be able to log in so I already did this process so I'm just gonna log in using the school the school that you in use that at, use that email to get you in okay so then here they're gonna have one for students and another for teachers. The students need to enter with the code that you give them. We'll talk about that more later on. Um, log in with Google. If you have Office 365, yeah, you log in with that. For my for our purposes, Google. Use the your school account, and then bam, you view they will take you to this page where it's pretty awesome that you could be able to find different assignments different things categories okay so here um, you go to you want to find a new topic you go to Nearpod library and you go here and you can filter which one you really want so for, uh, for today I'm going to use science and I'm going to be looking for DNA for example so I look I look at this um I also want to filter it more. Um let's see. I want a lesson about DNA. Okay. So I have something here, a lesson. So I'll pick that. Okay, functions of DNA, for example. So once I see it, I will like preview it to see if it if I like what I'm seeing. So they have a page here that you could use, okay. An essential question. Looking good. Objectives. All right. Let's get started. Okay. All right. Functions of DNA, etc. Okay. Looks overall good. So, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to add that to my lessons. So you can have it in your library. And I'll go back to the main home. Which you can press here to come back to your home. And you see I have it here. Now you could edit it so that to edit it you make a duplicate lesson so that you have your copy. And then that one you could fix it. And here is all the slides that has. So based currently where you at, you know exactly what level, um, what part of the lesson you're on. So sometimes you have some information here that may not be part of the plan that you have. So what do you do? Just remove it. Okay? Just remove that stuff. All right? And that's pretty much so you could remove it by highlighting this and pressing the lead slide. And boom it's gone. Okay? Things like that. Once you clarify that everything is good, you press save and exit. Okay. Um, next thing you would do as you see, you click on the slide you want to do, and it says here, live participation and student pace. So live participation means that you are actively participating with them on a Zoom, on Google Meets, or Microsoft Teams with the student. Um, they following you pace by pace together. While student base, you could sign it as a homework assignment where they could do it on their own and, and at their own pace. But here we just do live participation. Okay. When you do live participation, you should have something looking like this. A code should appear along with the website. So you need to join nearpod.com. Join.nearpod.com. And then they need to type in this code. This is for the student. And then once they type in their code, you gotta tell them that they have to put in their full name, first and last name, so they can get the credit. Okay. Here, you can also copy the link and attach it to a chat 
and any of those um, on Zoom that you're using or Microsoft Teams or Google Meets, which is easier for them, which could be easier for them. So, you know, use your tools, use your judgment based on the students you have, okay? Once you're done with that, um, if you have another teacher that you want to connect with, you put a co-link on. But in this case, it's just me. I'll keep it off. So once they log in, you'll be able to see who logs in in this waiting list here. Obviously, there's no students now because I haven't logged in. All right. So, but that it will be full of students list here, and it will tell you the total. Okay. Um, here, this tells you what slide you're currently on. Okay. And here, if you want to hide the students' names, you just press that to hide it. Or you want to show it, you press it. Okay. Once you've done that, you'll be able to move, and whatever's on the student screen is the same thing you're showing right here visibly on this screen. So they get to follow along and participate along with you. And they'll be able to read what you read. Okay. As a teacher, though, it'll be different because there'll be certain cases where, like for example, here at the collaborate board, what do you already know about DNA? Share as many details as you can. So the students will have a screen where they're going to be typing the information on, while you, you're going to have this, and you're going to be filtering and checking out the responses, and you're going to tell them to have a, um, the language has to be appropriate. And little by little, you'll be able to filter and see, and those who qualify, go through, and those who don't, won't. And then you'll be able to see um, you'll be able to see this board really well. So here, the students, you'll be able to check off any post that they have. If it's not appropriate, you don't let it go through. If it's appropriate, you let it go through. And that way, you ensure that the, the class environment is appropriate with positive language and positive learning. Okay? So that's that's a really good tool to use. Then you have different slides indicating, based on your order, PDFs that you want to do. Also, here, the student won't see this, but you will. But for the student, they're going to be having the type. Describe the purpose of DNA using examples from the article. So the student name will be here. The answer, once they submit, will be here. And, you, and the total amount of people that participate will be there. So for example, if you had like 10 students, and all 10 participated, that's 100. If only 8 participated, that would be 80%. Because 2 didn't answer yet. And so forth and so forth. Okay. Well, that's basically is it. Um, about how to use Nearpod. Alright. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And I'm, I'll be ready to add some more details to Nearpod. Um, on questions that you have, on things that have been troubling you, or new things that you'd like to share, feel free to comment below, okay? Um, let's learn together, and let's learn better. Take care. This is Mr. Frederick.